She's been called cooking's JK Rowling, and after being turned down by major publishers, she self-published her first cookbook, which went on to become the best-selling published book in Australia in 2007, selling 400,000 copies and placing second in overall sales only to Rowling's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Her book sales have gone on to reach a total sales mark of 8 million paperback sales. She's the highest selling lifestyle app in iTunes Australia store for the past five years and the highest ebook author in iTunes and Amazon for cooking. And with all that popularity, she's led the cookbook series to a television show, which is broadcast in 24 countries, including Australia, Africa, the UK and New Zealand. Now in her ninth year and with 24 self-published books in 26 countries around the world, we bring you the cooking sensation and owner of Four Ingredients, Kim McCosker. So welcome Kim to I Inspire. Thank you for having me. So I've, I've done a little bit of research on you. You, I think back in your earlier years, used to shove pen, ink pens into pens. <laughs> Where'd you find that? <laughs> How did you get from there to now owning four ingredients? Well, that was in my days as a backpacker in <laughs> London. And would you believe we lived in a house where there was about 16 of us and actually assume this is the lounge. One guy lived in a tent in the corner, paid 10 pound a week rent. And I worked at a, an agency, a placement agency. So I used to get all of us, the whole 16 of us, we would be the security for the Rolling Stones at Wembley. You know, and if a fight broke out, just duck. Just, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> that says, you know, security is just semantics. It's a word, we just were there for the free concerts. Yeah. And then on weekend, on Sundays, I'd always try and when we were working to save money to go overseas, I'd always try and get our Sunday jobs because it was back then as well, double time. Yep. So you could never get jobs for the, you know, never get people for the worst jobs. And one of the worst jobs ever was putting the biro, the ink filler into the big yellow pen for <laughs> eight hours a day. Well, I just thought I'd get a little jump start on it. So we're just going to heat some milk. A bestseller in Australia, both books have sold more than a million copies in the UK as well. Goodness, it's got a touch. It's got a touch. Genius. It's not about you in this segment. And of course, <laughs> it's not. It's about making it easy at home for everybody Ooh. watching. You know, come from a citrus farm in Mundumbra, now become this Nash Australia's biggest selling cookbook. Well, there is a link. So overseas, I realised I had a skill. I was mm. very, very skilled uh, at spending money. <laughs> I was so good at it. Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> and but and I knew I could earn money. Like earning money for me was never mm. been a problem. I'd just go and get two or three jobs. I had a really good work ethic. You work out the system. Okay, well we'll work Sunday. Then we don't have to work Monday, Tuesday. And we actually work away with more money. So I knew that we could earn money. But what I couldn't do, I, I didn't know how to invest it. Mm. I didn't know how to then take that money, the fruits of your efforts, and invest it and double it. So when I came back from traveling, I enrolled to do a degree in finance. Mm. And yeah, it was during that time. So I did a degree at Griffith University, a Bachelor of International Finance. I got a graduate placement with MLC, who was then in 2000 bought by NAB. So uh, headquarters in Brisbane was Corner of George and Adelaide, but um, he, you know, head office was mm. down in Docklands, Melbourne. So I spent a lot of time interstate. And the reality is you'd fly in late, you'd battle peak hour traffic, you pick the kids up, you still had to go to tennis or soccer or swimming. You get home, no one's walked the dog, the plants are dead, I've got to put a load of washing on, got to battle homework and everyone's starving, what's for dinner? Yep. I'd toddle off into my pantry of which I had a collection of beautiful cookbooks because I've always enjoyed reading cookbooks. Mm. I'd pull out one that looked semi-inspirational and Jesus, Mary and Joseph above, there were 16 ingredients and one was a <laughs> spatchcock. You know, so it was from that practical, I know, position of needing a simplified tool in the kitchen at six o'clock on a Wednesday mm. evening. Because initially people are skeptical. Mm. What can you cook with just four ingredients? But I'm here to tell you there's an amazing amount of food. I've done 24 books I was going to say, you've now. done like 24 books, haven't you, and, I know, of four ingredients? I have this extensive <laughs> database of unpublished recipes that we've garnered from people that we've met because we're very grassroots. Mm. We're at the expos, we're in the aisles of the supermarkets and the bookstores at this time of year in particular. You know, and we 
are chatting to you, what would help you in the kitchen. Mm. You know, people on Facebook, social media, always sharing, would you mind if I added this to my database? You know, so we've got this extensive database yeah. of just the most simplest recipes. I can't believe it. Mm. People go, when will you finish <laughs> writing books? And will I just- ever run out of recipes? <laughs> I know, and it just, every year I go to my kids, right, I'm not writing any books this year, we'll, we'll have a little bit of a, but then some opportunity or some, you know, some epiphany and you think, oh, we've got to do this. And then the excitement mounts and builds and then yep. it just happens and it doesn't feel like work. It's just happening because you're excited. Yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. you're working on it because you want to, you know, so. <laughs> oh, and speaking of, come over speaking here. Speaking of little munchkins, we've got two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I have three beautiful boys. How old are your brothers? Is this um, the fourth child? This is the fourth child. <laughs> Very blessed. So the whole premise of Four Ingredients was really to free up some time so that I could spend it more with my little beautiful, yeah. you know, raising your family, doing the things with them yep. that you wanted to. But that plan didn't really quite work out, Tamara. <laughs> Never have I been busier in my entire life. But you know, when you're passionate, I'm passionate about, you know, a few things in life, my family, mm you know, my business, giving back community work. And if you're passionate about it, it's not work. It just it just happens, yep. you know, it just Absolutely. happens, doesn't it? And yep. it's, it doesn't feel like you're working. Everyone goes, oh my God, where do you get your energy from? But when you're excited about oh, something, yeah. it's, it's, it's not easy. Work. It's not, it's, yeah. yeah. It's fun. It is good. Yeah. It is good. Yeah, we're He's very blessed. He's making little squeaky noises over here. <laughs> He's in heaven. I know. Do you want to go and get him? Do you want to go get him some apple and take him down to his cage? You're such a lovely daddy. Where's the lettuce? Where's the lettuce? Where do you think we keep the lettuce? In the fridge. Boy, you're so clever. <laughs> See you later, alligator. Love ya. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. See ya, Arnie. So I'm going to read a few um, stats out about your highlight and throughout your career. You've had 24 books in 26 countries. You've sold over 8 million paperback copies. There's been eight world tours, 27 P&O cruises, which you're now the food and wine ambassador for, guest appearances on US Today and Kathy Lee, and not to mention various appearances on TV. Do you ever stop to pinch yourself and, and wait, what have I created? I know, how did that happen? <laughs> like honestly, tomorrow no one is more shocked than I. I mean, and the first book, I mean, it just was never, the whole trade said it would never sell. Mm. You know, it was, and it was the time, um, 2007 where night, so it was pre-GFC, everyone was spending, if you were having a dinner party and weren't dropping a thousand dollars, like it was what was wrong and <laughs> you know, then for this book to just come out and defy logic, green cover books don't sell, there's no pictures, you don't have a culinary background, you have no um, front, you know, like restaurant mm. or no marketing machine behind you, we were really battling Jamie, Gordon and Nigella, they were huge at that point. I read that you were second to JK Rowling's and their Hello's. I know, 2008. I know. It was just incredible. So then the world starts to take notice as well, and then they start to inquire, and it just has kind of progressed through nothing. There's no, we had no roadmap. We, no one had ever done this before. We were still self published. We're still self published, you know, and it was just really, I don't know, gut feel, logic, common sense. I, you touched on before that the experts basically said this book won't work, you yeah. know, it's not going to happen. How did that make you feel? You know, did it make you drive harder? I, I was so pissed off because tomorrow to get a manuscript, like literally you open up your laptop and you go to Word document and there's a blank piece of paper and you start to write. So by the time you have a manuscript, you have presided over whether that's italics, bold it, should it be a semicolon, should it be a, a mm. comma, you know, do we invert that, who quoted that, where did that come from, where was the source, what's the bibliography, the it, look you have, there is a piece of your heart and soul on every single page and every single paragraph. Mm. So not only did that take 12 months and a lot of time and effort, we probably cooked over a thousand recipes to whittle it down to the 340 that made it into that first little book. That again took time and, and, and money mm. as well, cost, and I think I'd put on about three kilos in doing that. Tasting all the food. <laughs> so I was like, this did not happen in vain. There has to be a result. So, you know, the next step then when no publisher will take your call or won't look at you because you have no fame and therefore no following is to look at, okay, well, self-publishing method. But honestly, when that first 2000 books landed in our lounge room and the lorry backed up and just unloaded them all in my <laughs> lounge room, 
<laughs> I just took out the stuff that you'd find in a pram. I had a double pram. The two, my two eldest were four and one at the time. Mm -hmm. And I loaded it up with those books and literally went door to door. Oh my goodness. If you were living in Wavell Heights <laughs> in Brisbane, circa, you know, uh, April, May 2007, I have probably knocked on your door. So have you had any of those experts come to you now wanting to publish you? So the very first Christmas, um, and also then the second, we had, um, yes, uh, crates of Maui turn up. Um, we had uh, business class return flights uh, to all the major publishers um, down in Sydney to go and meet and greet and learn of the fantastic offer they were going to give us to become the publisher of the book. But by then, like I had worked out to a T the pie chart, you know, it costs this much to print, it costs this much to, to ship, to uh, warehouse, to distribute, to market. And then, oh, okay, well, we get that. And then I'd look at their pie chart and we're getting that. Yeah. And I'm going, well, hang on a second. That was a phone call. <laughs> the hard work's been done now. I believe that with success comes some challenges. So, so what have been some of your challenges to get you here today? Uh, well, the ATO, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a challenge. There's yeah. always a challenge. So it's how you deal with that challenge, I think, that it ultimately you know, uh, determines the result. Mm. And we don't look at challenges like, oh my God, yeah. oh, world's world's coming to us. oh my God. You know, we go, it's just automatic response for us. Okay, well, we'll just do this. We'll just try that. We'll just go here. We'll just go there. Yep. And it's just is, you know, it's not, you don't look at it like a challenge because it could just probably be overwhelming and just mm. throw your hands up and go, oh my God, that's yeah, it. I get it now. Okay, so what's the solution? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you could give your 15 year old self some advice, what would that look like or what would that be? Um, just go for everything, try everything, do everything, you know, don't be afraid because you fall down, you get back up, mm. you know, you trip over, you bounce right back up, you know, just talk to everyone, you know, the whole don't be, don't talk to strangers, are you kidding me? If I'd adhere to that, I would <laughs> sold 10 books, you know, strangers become your best friends, mm. you know, I don't know, just try everything. I grew up in? Mandabra. The first thing I do when I wake up is? Have a glass of water. If I could be better at anything, it would be? Singing. <laughs> I'm at my happiest when? I'm with my family. When I was growing up, I wanted to be? Uh, I wanted to be a lawyer, fashion designer or author. Very, oh well, we'll tick one. I know, <laughs> who knew? My hidden talent is? Um, I do a good pretenders karaoke of Brass in Pocket because <laughs> it's low register. <laughs> what hashtag best describes you? Happy. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. We hope this episode ignites your inner kitchen goddess and gets you inspired about cooking again. And to get you started, we have four signed wellness trilogy sets to give away to you. Jump onto istyletv.com.au and click on the episode tab to find out how to enter. To see the full range of Four Ingredients books, head over to their website, fouringredients.com.au. And if you want to keep up to date with everything that we're doing, be sure to like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to iStyle TV on YouTube. Thanks for watching, I'm Tam Wrigley, and I'll see you next time. I'm Kim McCosker and welcome to I Inspire by ITV. <laughs> Hang on, just give it to me again. And you're watching I Inspire by iStyle TV.